could have imagined that. See, what's this keynote about? It's about Joomla. And what is Joomla? Is it just a CMS? Just a piece of software? Or like some people tend to say, la, la, just some crat, crappy shit put together out there? Is it just, just that? Is it only 3% of the internet? Just millions of websites? More websites than Austria has citizens? So, what is Joomla for you? Who has a Joomla website here in this room? Who wrote a plugin or extension for Joomla? Oh, that's a lot too. Who earns money with Joomla in this room? Who contributes to Joomla without earning money? It's a lot too. So the question is why? Why do you contribute? Why are you here then? From the millions of people using Joomla, only a low percentage, really low percentage, is contributing to Joomla, sharing Joomla, and be here in that room. So, a lot of people complain actually in the last times on the future of Joomla. But on the software, we have big discussions sometimes. But is Joomla just software? Joomla is what you make, make out of it. Joomla is not only a CMS. It's so much more. It's the result of thousands of people putting together their knowledge, energy, and all their hopes into just a piece of software. No. Joomla is bringing together people out of the whole world. With Joomla, the world gets so much smaller. But let them speak for themselves. This is from spritzejoomlalove.com, a website Brian made. And that was the feedback for this year's edition. Everyone was asked to write something. And these are their voices. And these two. And a lot of other people contributed to that. And when you look at these keywords, you can see one thing. It's about the human factor. It's about friends. The top one keyword in all that slides and all that contributions was friendship. Everyone had that. It was 100%. Brian did that even five <coughs> times, so it's 110% maybe. <laughs> and that's what it's about. Actually, on number two, it was Jay Beer. So <laughs> we are not only friends, we like beer here in Joomla. And terms like business or software, software quality, weren't in the focus. It was not on that. It was about community. It was about friends, people sharing values together. <coughs> And now the 3.7 release is up in the front. And I want to share with you seven people who made that possible. Not ma maybe the most famous people, but a lot of people who did something for Joomla 3.7, who spent their free time, their spare time, who did not get money for that, but helped to make that possible. Let's start with someone, everyone who contributes to Joomla, core code now, but he's not a person everyone else knows because he's there always in the background, in the shadow. <laughs> it's Tobias Zulauf. He's working at an airport. He does SAP software. He does not earn anything with Joomla, but he contributes most of his spare time for free helping out people at Joomla. He's in the CMS maintainers team. He is there for every pull request. He's helping everyone out there. He's trying to make Joomla better. That. 
if he and that without earning a single cent out of it. <laughs> One big person, most people now, the grumpy guy of Joomla, <laughs> our old friend Robert Deutz. He has to be here because of the 3.7 release lead. No, he did a lot for Joomla. He was in PLT. He is organizing J and Beyond. Um, he's one of the core members of the J and Beyond EV. He makes a lot of things possible. And he is the guy who took care of Joomla 3.7. So if anything goes wrong, blame him. <laughs> See, and then we have Alan. Alan, you maybe heard of him yesterday in Brian's presentation. He's a guy who's doing custom fields. He's also a guy in the shadow, not so much in the front like other people here. And so, and he's doing extensions for Joomla for a long time. And with 3.7, he also gave us custom fields. He gave us one of his own extensions, DP fields. And he gave it back to Joomla and said, I want that in Joomla. I want everyone to have that directly out of the core. And that's a great thing. He worked hundreds and hundreds of hours to get that done, to make everyone happy, which is not always an easy task, not in Joomla. But he was there, and thanks to him we have that. <laughs> Thank you, Alan. Then we have Elisa. <laughs> <laughs> you can see here in the back. <laughs> she's not a coder, she's not a developer, even if she is really getting good at that in time. And she learns a lot on that area. But her area is design and marketing. There are also people you never see in the front of Joomla. She did, for the actual current landing page, she put out hours and hours of work, like 60 hours in one week to get the current Joomla.org site done. <coughs> she was almost burnt out on that. She worked weeks and weeks and made that possible. And it's not one page, it's a page in 27 languages in the beginning. Now there are more. There are a lot of other things where she did what she did and what people did not see. Because most of the work for Joomla is done by people you don't see. You just see the result. You live from that result. So there are a lot of people earning money here with Joomla. And a lot of people... You want to say something? Yeah. Lisa? And there are even more invisible people like Christiana. She helped me a lot on the translations. Yeah. It was a great help. Yeah. <laughs> to be a tender. <laughs> Um, are, I could name a thousand people who are healthy. I just picked seven. I'm telling you a bit later why. <laughs> See, Elisa is not only doing that. If someone needs some design stuff in Joomla done, you just talk to her and you know she managed to do that for you. It's a great work and this is also important. It's not only the case. And thank you Elisa for that a lot. Then we have guys like Ufu. <laughs> <laughs> Ufu is in, involved in so many things. He was here with us for the Media Manager Code Sprint we had in Vienna some days ago. He's working on bringing people together. I think Ufu is a guy who po uh, spoke with most people here because he goes to everyone, asks, uh, asks the person what he is doing, what he she is doing with Joomla brings them together and tries to get them to the project, to help the project, and not only to be here. And that's great work from Ufo. And he's there in marketing. He's in so many areas involved, he actually has no time to work more anymore. <laughs> so thank you Ufo for that. You're doing great. <laughs> so when we talk about 3.7, we also have to talk about Johannes. Johannes finally made the router 
who knows the story of the router here in that room? Okay, then let me tell that. It started with a Kickstarter project. So some, someone thought I'd do something good, but I'd take some money for it. Or at least I'd try to finance it a bit. So he had a Kickstarter campaign back in 2012 or 2013, and he got around 6,000 euro. And everyone thought, okay, we get something done then. And that was four years ago. And now he worked like 6,000 hours on that project and did earn one euro per minute. But he was one who earned money for Joomla, but he did great. And now we have a new router enabled in new things, and it's finally here. <laughs> you don't need any Ceph components anymore. IDs can be hidden, and a lot more. Brian told us that yesterday. So thank you, Johannes. Even if you're not here. And the last one is a friend of mine from India. It's Punit Kala. A lot of people don't even know about Google Summer of Code and Joomla. This year we had six students working four months at full time, so 40 hours a week, on Joomla projects. And he was the admin of that. He made that happen. He actually managed to get uh, a six slots by Google in that project. And he managed, he kept up the spirit of the students, mentors, and a, lot, and a lot of other things. The project Brian told you yesterday about Com Associate, Com Associate Association is, uh, is made by one student. And he did work on that mostly. And there were other people like Andre, Jean-Marie, who put that together. And when we have that feature, then it's thanks to him, because he got us the slots for Joomla. So, thank you, Punet. <laughs> and the fun thing about him is he actually started as a student himself. Back in 2012, he was a Joomla Google Summer of Code student. He learned then Joomla. And since then, he's a member of the community and doing like 20 or 30 hours per week and helping making Joomla better. So, we have that community bringing people here, bringing people together, and we also have that community that gets these people do something for you. So there's a lot, but if you have time, give them our line J beer. A lot of them are here, and when you see them, invite them to a beer. They have earned that a lot. So when you see Elisa, Ufu, Alon, and a lot of other people, they all earn beer from you. <laughs> but wait, only them. It was just seven, and it was really hard to pick seven. I could have picked 70 people, and even more, because it's so hard to pick them. But I wanted to show you seven people not everyone knows about. Everyone knows how much Brian is contributing, how much George is doing, how much Michael is doing, or at least a lot of people who are involved with the project do know that. But there are also these people who also make it possible to have us Joomla. The secret who's doing Joomla Day Austria, like these events, where we try to find new people, where we try to motivate people to come and join us, to come and join the family of Joomla and help making the product better. So that was, for example, JWC 2016. A lot of people made that possible. And these are all people <coughs> working on Joomla. Or who knows who, uh, which event was that? And not Marco. <laughs> Good one. And who knows that? <laughs> it was a recent one. <laughs> in Germany? <laughs> yeah, it was in Germany. It was Leipzig this year. Or oh, this one. 
It's a bit more complicated. Like in India. <laughs> yeah, and what in India? <laughs> yeah, Joomla World Conference in India. And Mark was always on that photo. <laughs> <laughs> See, Joomla is not seven people, and it was really hard to pick them. I picked them because they are not always in the front, and not everyone, maybe except Robert, is now not there. But they are all a part which is needed to have Jum Joomla done. <coughs> and in the end, it's also about you. I asked the question, who is earning money with Joomla to you? And if you earn Joomla, uh, money with Joomla, try also to give something back. Because it lives from constant contribution. It can be quite ha uh, hard to get into Joomla. The learning curve can be quite tough. But don't give up on that. Ask for help. Everyone here is to, there to help you. And people are happy if you ask them how something is working. Because they know how hard it can be to contribute, to start contributing. But it's your op uh, opportunity to do more and to learn more and to experience a lot of more than in your normal work, than just doing nice customer websites or something else. Working at an open source project means that all people putting their effort and their enthusiasm into that and their spare time. That you carry by this, even when things are complicated. We are living from that constant contribution. And Joomla is not a project for a year. It's a lifetime project. And it will return you a lot. I can tell that. And a lot of people here in the room can tell you that too. It's giving you experience. It gives you friends. It gives you knowledge. You have great events like here in Austria. You can travel around the world. And it gives you the sense of your life that you do something meaningful. Something magic. It gives back a lot. Say. Everyone is invited to contribute. If you don't know how to start, just talk to us. We find something to do. There's a lot. <laughs> There's one thing which is a bit off of the topic, but I wanted to talk on that because we had some <coughs> negative voices on that topic. Joomla security. You know we had some security holes like 3.4 and 3.4.5, uh, or which were fixed with 3.4.7, uh, or the recent patch 3.6.4. But people tend to say then, yeah, Joomla is insecure. But I ask the question, why is Joomla more secure? So it's about, we are like 3% of the web. That means we are an interesting target. Maybe not as much but as WordPress. But 3% of the web means millions of websites. So we are targeted every day. And we are tested every day. And we get much more tested like some proprietary system by one company which is used by like five websites. And people think on how they code. And before something went in, into Joomla, we need at least two human tests, which always look on the code, someone contributes. No one contributes code directly into Joomla. It's always this process of you do a so-called pull request, and two people need to review, automated tests have to review, and then it starts. And we have the Joomla security strike team, which is working when security issues show up, when they are reported, to resolve them. David here works with the big hostess to inform them before to hopefully often make it possible to have so-called mod security rules to fix problems in front. So we are trying to be proactive. And we don't communicate these things in the public. And then the patch comes and everyone knows at this date, please patch your site fast. It's a lot of stuff. And it's a lot of work to actually maintain that. And that's 
what makes Joomla more secure? On a proprietary system, you have maybe, when you are lucky, one code review. Or most times, no one. Everyone just contributes to that. No one overlooks that. In Joomla, we have that safety net, making it way better. And at the end, you make it happen. Everyone in this room should ask <coughs> itself the question, can you bring up some time, can you bring up some help for Joomla? Because everyone here in this room is needed. There's so much to do. And in the end, it's two less people who do something. And we could need a lot of more. Then maybe Elisa does not have to work 60 hours a week. So you, if you have some energy, some love for Joomla, come and join it. You can do translations. That's easy start. And it's a tough work because translations should be good. We had a lot of critics for like German's translation which do not match and we have big debates. We even have big debates for ENGB. And you can start helping there. You can help testing. As I said, every pull request needs at least two testers before it gets merged. And testing doesn't mean you have to code, but you have to install a component, patch tester, click on install that, and then following the instructions uh, of the code change and see if everything is still working. If we would have more tests, we could prevent a lot of bugs. So if you say, why is that not that way? You should say, why could I not make it myself that way? That's a different in open source. Testing also make, make, uh, uh, means giving feedback. If you experience an issue, report it. Out of the millions of websites, we sometimes have issues which a lot of people should have been <coughs> experienced, but, but no one reported it then no one knows about that and no one fixes it. So it's also about giving feedback to the developers. If you want, you can also start developing. That's from a code sprint. Some of the people on that photo, like <coughs> Peter, Marco, are here. Even small things can help. <coughs> a lot of pull requests are just changing one to 10 lines of code. So where you don't need deep experience in system architecture or coding, but you can start fixing small stuff which shows up in the issue tracker with some decent knowledge of PHP. And it's a good starting point. And then you can have fun with these guys at a code sprint. <laughs> you can organize stuff. Mike's this always looking guy who's always looking in his laptop and tries to make things happen. <coughs> and for organizing stuff, we have some new events which are going to happen in the next year and where everyone is invited. We have Joomla Camp Essen, which was a great thing last year. You should all join that. It's David already talked about it. It's an unconference. You wish your topics, and people then start talking about that. You want to know something? Go there, find someone. There are all that nerds who know the stuff. Fourth and the fifth of February next year. So first weekend. It's also on the back of the program. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> There's J. Kevin, a new format we established last year. It's like 20 people from the Joomla community. It started as J. Def Hütte. We changed that to J. Hütte because everyone is invited. It's like a small format where 20 people out of the Joomla community join together for a weekend and have fun together. The next one will be not so far for you. It will be in Starnberg, near Munich. And 
If you want to join, come there. You learn on new friends. You learn a lot on Joomla. It's really an event which is a small circle where you learn people to know, where you work on something nice for Joomla. We have Joomla Day Switzerland, which Alan tries to start. <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> as you know, we didn't have a Joomla Day Switzerland for some time. And we need one, because to be complete. So we have one in Austria, and now it's time for one in Switzerland too. Because all these events bring people together, new people, new faces, people we haven't seen before. And these people we could use, we can need you, we need you. So we have that. It will be probably somewhere in the Alps. So with the option, we try to make that happen. Alan tries to make that happen. That we have one day of skiing or something on that. <laughs> There will be Jay Finker next year. <laughs> oh. Jay Finker is like Jay Kevin, but, but a bit longer. You can say one or two weeks or whatever you want. And we go to Greece. And we will be there, we'll be there, have fun for one week. It's like vacation and Joomla. <laughs> Joomla vacation. <laughs> See, you should join that too. It looks nice, isn't it? See? There's a lot, there's a lot to do, and it's about that. There's a lot to do and experience together. And <coughs> together we create, together we make Joomla. Joomla is not one person. Joomla is not ten persons. Joomla is you, and it's about you. So please join us, and welcome to the cult of Joomla. Thank you.